Hello, my name is David Ades. I offer life coaching at a reasonable rate, and today I'm talking about centering ourselves. There are two pathways uh, that I'm going to cover today. It's a double-edged sword if you want to center yourself. The fundamental component of this double-edged journey is that you want to. And what you have to understand is that it's not the most exciting thing in the world to be centered. It's very sober. It's truth-oriented, which is bitter. The truth is most often bitter. It's clarifying, which is often painful, because in order to clear things up and then be clear, you have to face your demons, as they say. And then the experience from the center is, well, it's more sober, meaning that you're more in touch with your own mortality. Uh, It's more responsible. You do have more internal freedom, which allows you to make clearer decisions and structure things on the outside in a more conscious and intentional way. But with freedom uh, comes more responsibility. So you really do have the choice between living an uncentered, dramatic life, and, and not only in a bad way, all the lights and the sounds of the world, all of the repetitive thoughts and dramatic emotions of the mind, you can live that life. It's like being in a candy factory. Sometimes you have bad candy, you don't like the thoughts and you don't like the emotions and you don't like what you see out there, but it's constant consumption, at least you're eating something. Where the center is more like you learn to deal with existential hunger. There is a missing piece in reality. There's something that isn't here, according to subjective experience. The psychoanalyst Jacques Lacan, L-A-C-A-N, a uh, a psychoanalyst that writes in a very strange and uninterpretable way, uh, proposed that desire, human desire, is a whole in our subjectivity. There's a part of us that is a whole, it's not complete. And it shapeshifts depending on what it's asking for. So sometimes I want money, so it takes the form of a dollar bill. And then I get it, and then what happens to it? It just shapeshifts into the form of a beautiful person. Now I want a beautiful person, and I get it. And now it shapeshifts into some... There's a hole. There's a hole in reality. The philosopher Slavoj Žižek says that desire is a wound on reality. So all that I'm pointing to here is that the surface-level existence is one of constant consumption. You're consuming your own thoughts. You're consuming your own emotions. And you're prompting them to come up by engaging in the lights and sounds of the external world. What's going on over here? What's going on over there? Ooh, that's fun. And that's exciting. And that's arousing. And that's, and you get to eat all of the time. But you're always hungry. You can never eat enough. Consume, consume, consume. Yet, the, the kind of ugly truth about that life is we are always hungry. So coming to the center is is not being fed. It's actually admitting that you are not being fed, which is the reason for all of the consumption. All of the consumption is a compensation against the existential reality that there is something we cannot fill within ourselves. So we go for consumption. You see what I'm saying? So you choose which life that you want. And the kind of good part here the the sobering part here is that you can't just like fall to the center of yourself. You can't just do it all in one go. The the journey is too harrowing. It there's too much trauma in the way. Life is too distracting. You get caught up in your own day, you get caught up in yourself. Happens to all of us, happens to me. You can't just sink to the center and become like a monk. It takes time. It takes experience and time. But we don't know that nowadays. We don't live with time nowadays. We think we are the masters of time and time doesn't exist and we can just rush ahead and, and it's all BS. We don't have a relationship with time anymore and, and it's, a, it's a crime against humanity. It's a crime against ourselves. So, the well, I do want to finish saying that since you can't just fall to the center, you don't have to worry too much about like, oh, am I going to have to try too hard? Am I going to have to give up too many things? 
You might have to encounter some pain and face some demons and what have you, but you can't do it all anyway. So it's more like, uh, it's more like turn yourself, just change direction and then start going. You don't have to worry about whether you're going to get there or you're not going to get there, how fast you're going to get there. And this is the real beauty of the journey to your own center, which is what we're all looking for. Like, I'm looking for myself. I'm trying to find myself. Well, I'm not out there. I'm right here in some strange way. But if I can't find my center or if I don't have access to my center, then I can't find myself. So then I look elsewhere. And this is what we're going to get to. So we're talking about changing directions, meaning if you just stop feeding outwardly, consuming your own thoughts and emotions, if you could just calm yourself from time to time a little bit more than you do, if you could just hold back from consuming external lights and sounds a little bit more than you normally do, your psyche and your body and your heart would have no other option but to turn inward, to find something to eat. You see what I'm saying? And this is kind of how we learn to find value in ourselves and learn to generate value from within. It's because when we detach enough and consistently enough and frequently enough and deeply enough from consuming value on the outside, our brain and our body and our heart have no choice but to look inward, to find something. And from where? You know, God knows from the unconscious mind, from the subconscious mind, from the soul, from the spirit. Where do we get stuff? I don't know. But there's a place in us where stuff happens and stuff comes from and stuff goes to. And in order to have the best relationship we can with that place inside us, where stuff goes and stuff comes from and stuff happens, we have to be as centered as possible. So the double-edged journey of coming back to yourself, finding yourself, is clearing out the center because you can't be in your center. You can't be in yourself if you're, if yourself is full of pain. You can't be in yourself if you're full of anxiety. You can't be here. You can't be here if it's not tolerable to be here. Which is what people who sit on a lot of pain struggle with. It's like, okay, I want to be myself and I want to be centered and I want to relax and I want to fight for myself instead, but I can't. I can't because all of my creaturely instincts tell me to consume outwardly Get me away from what's here. I don't want to eat this. And this is the beginning of the journey, that if you pull away from consuming outward, outward things, your brain, your body, your heart will be forced to turn inwards to feed. But what is there to eat? Anxiety, pain, repressed feelings that are resulting in depression. What is there to eat? I don't want to eat those things. I don't know if I can stomach it. I don't know if I can process it. But this is the only way to, to find a way to your center. This double-edged sword is you have to clear the pathway to yourself by the other side of the sword, the other edge of the sword, by pulling away from all of the external and uh, shallow consuming that you do. You have to calm your mind. You have to by calming your mind, you can better keep your emotions settled so that the functioning aspects of yourself, your brain, your heart, your body, can start consuming what's in the way of the deeper levels of yourself. At the top is thought and emotion. If you can calm those down, then your brain, your body, and your mind will be able to feed on the stuff that is causing you to be stuck there anyway. In the first place, I mean. You have to feed on the repressed feelings or the really painful feelings that are keeping you consuming at the top. So you can feed on something more rich, more nutrient-dense, which are feelings, human feelings, different from emotions. And then you can clear up emotions so that your brain, your mind, and your heart can feed on something deeper than human feelings, which is human experience. Sensory input. The meditative mind, like the point of meditation 
is to imagine, to entertain the idea, to humor the position that just raw sensory experience is enough to feed on. But, and it's a double-edged sword again here, it's one of my favorite phrases because so many paradoxes in life, you cannot adequately nourish yourself on raw experience if you can't get to that nutrient dense material because it's it's how do you say chalk full of pain so you try to meditate and you run into boredom which is a a different kind of frustration or a different kind of anger you run into anxiety which is a form of it's a danger response it has something to do with pain you run into you run into something that doesn't feel nutrient dense but isn't this the point of talk therapy isn't this the point of healing it's let's intentionally see if we can feed on the stuff that you instinctively don't want to maybe when you meet with someone that you trust you can allow yourself to calm Maybe you can even bring some stuff up that can be processed together so that one day you can find the center. So, quite, a, quite an explorative video today. All that you need to take away from this is if you simply detach a little bit more, this is what dopamine detox is, if you just detach a little bit more from how much you consume external stuff, your brain, your heart, your mind will be forced to look inwards. Even if that just means to look more locally at first. Like, stop putting your awareness out of your real life. The ideal moment is that attention turns to the internal, but that also means attention comes back to your real life your living space and your current relationships and your job and your school and what's actually going on in your life, which then at the center of what's actually going on is you, what's actually going on in your internal world. So if you just pull back a little bit from giving your power away so easily because you're so hungry, if you're able to stomach the hunger of, of, Feed a little bit less on this stuff with the faith that what your mind and your heart and your body will turn to feed on when you take that stuff away from it will, not that it will be more tasty, it's likely that it will be much less tasty, but it will be more real. You will be able to take bites out of and therefore process your real circumstances. Whether they're pleasant or unpleasant, you have to be able to feed on whatever's in your reality. And uh, slowly, slowly, your attention turns more inward, and then you get to the center. And then you learn, which is something that I also am learning, why monks, for example, have to be so, so disciplined. Why the samurai has to be so, why the stoic, why the Zen Buddhist has to be so, so disciplined. It's because there is a hunger that we cannot satisfy. You know, the people say the Buddhist phrase is life is suffering. I've heard that that's a mistranslation. It's actually life is dissatisfaction. And that's the hunger. You can never eat enough. You will always leave the table a little bit hungry. And that's something that you can work on, your relationship to that. You can master to the extent that you need to at this point in your life, and then it will change as you grow. You will get stronger and things will change. And I don't know what's in store for you. I don't know what's in store for me. Time will tell. But you can help your relationship to dissatisfaction. It is a passive thing that always exists. There is always this hunger. that, And you will just have to learn to be okay with being a little bit hungry. It can make you strong. It can make you diligent. It can make you perseverant, perseverant. 
uh, the last thing I want to say is that the difference between life is suffering and life is dissatisfaction is suffering is this active thing. Like if life is suffering, then life is coming towards me, making me feel pain, and I can't do anything about that. But if the correct translation is life is dissatisfaction, dissatisfaction is a passive thing. It's just hanging out there all of the time. It's not actively coming against me like suffering. Unless my relationship with dissatisfaction is that I'm actively trying to push it away, then it's going to feel like it's actively eating me away. And this is a very difficult truth about uh, reality. It reminds me of something that the psychologist Carl Jung wrote, which is that the position that the ego takes, your conscious mind, the position that your ego takes towards the unconscious, which is everything you don't know about yourself, everything you're not feeling, everything you don't remember, and everything about reality that you can't put your finger on, the the same position that your conscious mind takes towards what is unconscious, the unconscious will or is taking the same position towards the ego. It's like you resist life, it will feel like life is resisting you. And this is so such a difficult territory to, to navigate because when my unconscious is full of pain because of trauma, then my relationship to myself is one of fighting. It feels like myself is fighting me and it feels like in order to live, I have to fight myself. So it's very strange. It's like, what am I supposed to stop fighting it? Am I supposed to accept that it doesn't like me so that if I accept it, then it will accept me more? It's a complete paradox. You're in a wrestling match and all of your instincts tell you to keep up the struggle. And there are these moments in your life where you are defeated. You cannot keep up the struggle. And then you realize, well, you can't. So you, you're going to have to find a different way. You're going to have to accept more. You're going to have to find more compassion. You're going to have to work smarter instead of harder. You're going to have to work with yourself. You're going to have to trick yourself. You're going to have to look for support. You're going to have to navigate so subtly, so adaptably, so from such a from such a human and yet like aspiring uh, spiritual uh, place, masterful uh, place. Thanks for listening or watching. Uh, if you like this video, give it a like, comment your thoughts down below, subscribe to see more, and I will talk to you soon.